Hi everyone, my name is Tom Green, and we're going to be talking about creating a blog with Hugo. Uh, Hugo is a static HTML generator. Uh, it's helpful for creating a website if you're not using any sort of JavaScript or database pools, and you're just doing a blog, say for a tech blog or whatever. Uh, there are a lot of different options out there, and Hugo is my preferred option. The bits of it are all stored locally on your computer. With a uh, Hugo site, you can actually do local offline builds to create a sample site. So it's, it's very similar to a Jekyll. Jekyll kind of has been out a little longer, and it works the same way, but it doesn't require an executable or any sort of servers to be running the entire time that you're building. Uh, with a simple command, you can create a local copy of your site within seconds and access it. it all the, the links work properly. You can make sure everything looks good before you then ship it. The local editor is it's written up just in Markdown. So you're, if, as long as you know Markdown language, you can do it. And it's open source with no costs. So you can go out and download it, and we're going to talk through that. But if you're interested in starting to learn and get involved with the open source community, that's, it's, a, it's a good gateway into that. Your blogs are all written in Markdown. It generates static HTML that can be shipped to Amazon S3 or any other host that supports that. So I personally chose to use Hugo because I was paying $140 a year for hosting on a platform that was managed but I wasn't really getting the service and the, the themes that I wanted to get. Uh, whenever you're, you're at the mercy of the content creators, you couldn't create your own themes. It really was, it was hard to do a text blog on a platform that was really meant for photo blogs and photo journalism. I also was beholden to the internet in order to write a blog. Copy and paste into their uh, Ed, online editor wasn't as, I didn't keep formatting how I wanted it to. It didn't have an autosave, so I was losing data if I was leaving it too long and like a browser crash or I accidentally closed the browser, everything would be gone. Uh, I worked around that, but I didn't feel like I wanted to work around it. And there's hundreds of templates. I, I love changing up the way the blog looks. I was always, when I was working with Jekyll, trying to build new templates, and I would have mixed success getting those published. Sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. Sometimes I didn't have a dependency on one computer that I had on another. And I used five different computers at different points in different areas, so I wanted to be able to have it all offline and together. So what do you actually need to get started with Hugo? You need access to a operating system. If, that's funny, but sometimes if you're using a thin book or you know, a Chromebook, you may not have the ability to install Git or install the Hugo executables. So you can use a cloud instance, the Nano instance in AWS, or you can use your local operating system on a laptop. Whatever you want to do, it, it will work. And you also need to have compatible hosting. I personally use AWS uh, S3 as my blog's host but you can use GitHub pages if you don't want to pay anything. So I pay a uh, sum of 56 cents per month to do all my hosting of my website, and I um, think that's reasonable. But if you don't want to pay anything, if you just want to get started and use this as a platform to learn, you can go to GitHub pages for free. Uh, you need content, which I can't really help with. Um, Everybody has something to say. This is an easy way to say it. Markdown is in plain text. So all you need to do is go in and write. Uh, Hugo takes care of the back end grunt work, and you can just go. And finally, Git. So Git is a source control ver uh, software. You, it'll let you add to remote, push up to GitHub, do all your publishing, and make sure that you track your changes and can sync it up between different remote uh, clients. One. Yeah. So the website for Hugo is gohugo.io. It's an amazing site. It's extremely well documented. Go out there and, and look around, even if you don't plan to play with it. Just look around because it's an amazing 
testament to uh, documentation, <laughs> if nothing else. Uh, there's a quick start guide that tells you everything you need to know to actually get started, but I prefer to look at the navigation bar on the left pane, which I've called out here. It has detailed instructions per your platform. I would love to help you install Hugo right now, but everybody has a different operating system. I use it in Windows, it's downloading a zip file, putting it in a folder, and creating a, a pointer to go from the command prompt to that folder when you type Hugo. That, that's it. That's the install for Windows, and it's easier you just brew for Mac or um, whatever your package installer for Linux is. To, to get hosting, the examples I'm using are going to be hosted out of GitHub. I personally use uh, S3. I've got it documented on my blog, everything I've done to host the blog, so, sort of inception-like. So you go to my blog to read how to host my blog. Uh, it's part of a three-part series that the VMUG leaders and uh, where I'm from, I'm a VMUG leader in Kentucky, and we all took a part. So I wrote about how to generate the content. One of my co-leaders wrote about how to actually host it in AWS. And one of my co-leaders wrote about how to automate everything using um, CI CD pipelines. Uh, so if that's in S3, I pay 56 cents a month versus I was paying $12 a month or something, like 140 a year for my other hosting site. It's great. Uh, GitHub pages or GitLab pages, we'll host it for free and you can even do HTTPS with a custom domain now on both of those platforms. So do whatever hosting you would like. This examples are going to be in GitHub pages as well documented on the GoHugo website. How to do this. And then create a site file. Uh, whenever you go in, you create the folders per the documentation. You type Hugo new site and the site name. And that creates your website folders. Everything It generates everything you need. It creates a number of folders, I think like six or seven. And then it gives you what to do next right in your command prompt or your terminal. And it says if you want to create a new post, you type Hugo new and post, whatever the post name is going to be. Uh, that, that's it. It'll then format the markdown file. It'll give you the front matter, which we'll talk about in a second. That'll tell Hugo the metadata about the dates, the name of the, the thing. It's, it's just that simple. Uh, the two folders I'm going to call out, I call out more in the uh, blog entry that I'll link at the end, are content and themes. So we're going to do a lightning round for creation here. After you do the Hugo new site, you have to install a theme. To do that, on the Hugo website, there is a link called themes. And it takes you to a, get a page of, diet of pictures that then go to GitHub so you can download the themes. All the themes are posted out on GitHub and hosted. Now, that means that you can keep them in sync by just using GitHub commands. And they're all open source. You can look at all the files to create your own theme or to go in and create extra plugins for it. You don't have to install any pl plugins locally to use Hugo, which was one of my big problems using Jekyll, is that all the plugins had to be versioned correctly locally and across five computers, that was becoming too hectic. I, I don't like that. Uh, but with uh, Hugo, that's not a problem. So you, you download the theme into your themes folder. There is a configuration file within that theme that you put out into the base folder. You type Hugo new post in your post name, .md, because it's all written in Markdown. And then you do a test. And the test is you just type Hugo server. It pops up a local host uh, connection, runs the server locally out of RAM. And in seconds, you can actually go look at it. So when I was talking about the themes, this is the theme uh, website. You can see all the pictures. There's a lot of different ones. Some of them are based off of Jekyll or WordPress themes. Some of them are completely brand new. Uh, the example website that's actually live that I used to generate all of this is the first one because it was first. I just chose the first one because I was in a hurry generating the site. I, get, I used git clone to clone it into the themes folder. It pulled down everything I needed. The configuration file is called config.toml. In every 
uh, theme that there's an example site. You can pull it out of the example site and all the required variables to use that theme are included. It's, it's super simple. There's all kinds of comments in it. You can add or subtract whatever you want. If you want to add social media or you don't have certain social medias, you just comment it out. Um, the, the parameters on it will tell you what goes into the title bar. What, whenever you open it up, does it go straight to your post or does it go to an index? What goes in your sidebar? You set all of that up in this one file. You version control it. If something's broken, you can revert back. You can test it locally to make sure everything looks good before you update it. And then you create the content for the example that's out on vbbhugo.github.io. I did hugo new post hello vbb.md. That created the front matter. Uh, if you can see the picture, the front matter is just a header onto a markdown file that lets you set the title, the date, if it's a draft, what categories and tags you're using. Uh, so you set all of that information there. There's a default that tells you what it generates. You can edit the default and it'll always do that or you can make a submodule um, and say, all right, for posts, you have this certain thing, but if you're doing a page, which is just a different folder as far as I'm concerned, you just, it has this certain head, uh, front matter. Anything in the post folder automatically gets added into your, t your header, into your top bar. The defaults are saved in the archetypes folder, which is another folder generated whenever you type Hugo new site. So you do test and push at that point. To test, you type Hugo server. If you have drafts that you want to see, you can do a flag for drafts. If you want to change your theme, you can do a, your, your default theme is in your config.toml file. However, if you want to try a different one, you do a, a flag and say what theme you want to try that's in your themes folder. It'll automatically pull that up and do a different theme for you. Uh, whenever you actually build, it will create a public folder. So that public folder is where your static files go. And here's where learning git, there's a little bit of an advanced git command that's a, called a submodule. So I'm version controlling the, all the files into git. Then I'm going and I'm creating a sub uh, module that then takes the public folder and pushes it out to GitHub, uh, to a github.io repo. So there's two different repos, one having all of my source files, one having all of my static HTML. That way I just can change directories, go into a, the public folder and push it, the site goes live. In the, in the folder above that, I push it and the files are saved to be synced or downloaded or whatever later. Uh, the great thing is these are all publicly browsable repos on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash vbbhugo, you can look at the files that I've used for these pictures. The site is live. Uh, if you like it, you commit, pushes all the data, your site goes live. So that's a lot of data, a lot of text. Learning it in 15 minutes is hard. Do you want, if you want to go see anything, you can go to my website, which is tomgreen.com slash Hugo. It'll take you directly to my post. Uh, if you go to github.com slash vbhugo slash blog, you can see the source files for an active Hugo blog. And if you go to vbbhugo.github.io, you'll see the blog in action, and there's a copy of all the slides on that page. So there's one post. That post has the slides from SlideShare. I'm a host on the V Brown Bag podcast. If you want to catch information on uh, web development, Hugo, automation, Azure, VMware, uh, you can go sign up for the podcast at vbrownbag.com slash brownbags. And I'm on Twitter at tbgree00. I, I would love to talk to anyone about it and help you set up your blog. Uh, it's a good way to learn Git. It's a good way to learn Markdown. And it can make you feel DevOpsy if you're not DevOpsy, which I'm not very DevOpsy. So it's pretty cool to be able to have a end result that you can point to to say, hey, I learned that and I can do this. So thank you very much.